Hello and welcome to the program, this edition of Newsroom Series covering Nigeria's Southeast. But first, our top stories. The River State House of Assembly has ruled against Governor Simlai Fubara to enact the River State House of Assembly Service Commission law. The House took the decision on Friday after convening an impromptu sitting. This is the second time the state lawmakers will override Governor Fubara's assent on bills. In January, the House ruled against Fubara's assent to four bills that were earlier passed and sent to him for assent. Two students of the Nasarawa State University, Kefi, have lost their lives during the distribution of palliatives, while 23 have been hospitalized. Head of Information of the University, Mr. Abraham Habu, revealed this to Channel's television via a phone conversation. He says the school had received palliatives from the state government to distribute to the students to cushion the effect of the economic hardship. The items were billed for distribution today at the convocation arena of the school, but before the takeoff, some students overpowered the security on ground, causing a stampede which resulted in the death and injury of some of the students while some carted away the food items. A week after the killing of 17 military personnel in Okwama community in Ugeli South local government area of Delta State, the Minister of Defense, Mohamed Badaru, has vowed that those behind the act will not go unpunished. The minister who made the vow when he visited troops of the one mechanized division in Kaduna to commiserate with the general officer commanding over the incident says the federal government and military authorities will not rest until the masterminds of the crime are apprehended. Former President Olusha Gwambasanjo has commended the governor of Abia State, Dr. Alex Soti, for assenting to a bill repealing the law that created pensions and allowances for former governors and deputy governors enacted by the immediate past administration. The former president made the commendation during a courtesy visit to the governor's country home in Umbosi, Isialangwa, South local government area. He asked other state governors to follow Governor Oti's example in repealing the law, which he describes as criminal and daylight robbery. That is number one. The pension scheme for former governors here is atrocious. It's like daylight robbery because it allows them to have a house in Abuja and elsewhere and cut away with whatever they feel like cutting away. And yet, the pension for ordinary people are unpaid. What sort of leadership is that? And you came and you say there will be an end to that rascality. I congratulate you. And I said to you, I hope some of your colleagues will follow your footsteps. And I do hope some of them will follow your footsteps. You have started, but you should never be tired. You will be discouraged, you will be abused, you will be called name. But if we have one third of our states doing what should be done, this country will become a different country. Responding, Governor Oti thanked the former president for visiting and sharing his experience in governance and for supporting his action. I didn't know. Thank you for supporting our decision uh, to repeal uh, the pension law for former governors and former deputy governors. Um, I had said yesterday as I signed uh, the law, the, uh, the bill into law, that um, I strongly believe that leadership uh, is still worship. And if you've come to serve the people, you can't at the same time be fleecing the people. 
Still in Abia, Dr. Alex Oti has flagged off the reconstruction of the long-abandoned 30-kilometer Arochuku Ndiokereke Ozoabam Road. Speaking during the flag of exercise at the Amuvi Roundabout, Dr. Alex Oti said the project, along with the Umwahia Zoakoli Ohafia Road, is a testament to the Oti-led administration's commitment to removing barriers that hinder the people's potential and economic prosperity. And part of infrastructure is power. Uh, in fact, it's the most important uh, infrastructure for uh, industrialization, production, manufacturing, and even the small, uh, medium, small and medium scale enterprises. So, I want to also thank you for supporting our decision. Uh, to repeal uh, the pension law for former governors and former deputy governors. Um, I had said yesterday as I signed uh, the law, the, uh, the bill into law, that um, I strongly believe that leadership uh, is still worship. And if you've come to serve the people, you can't at the same time be fleecing the people. I agree with you completely on your comment about infrastructure. And that's why we are very focused and single-minded in developing infrastructure, particularly for ABA, which is the commercial and industrial hub of the state, and actually the southeast. The people of Orca North have staged a solidarity health walk to showcase the latest gift of the 26-kilometer road handed over to them by the Anambra State Governor, Professor Chukuma Soludo. Speaking during the exercise, the Transition Committee Chairman of Orca North Local Government Area, Mr. Thangod Aniago, says the latest exploit of the governor, which impacts five big agrarian communities, have already started making millionaires out of them, as agricultural activities have accelerated in the area in no small measure. In February 2023, the Anambra State Governor, Professor Chukuma Surudo, visited Obalfemili to ascertain the level of work on the 26-kilometer road project awarded in September 2022. For him, Orca North was one of the many reasons he decided to contest the governorship seat in Anambra State, with the resolve that roads must be a priority in the area. And just to go and inspect roads that are now. Guys in Anambra got one construction site. And yeah. one construction site. <laughs> 16 months on, the difference is clear, and the people of Orca North say this great gift must be celebrated. They stage a health walk from Amansi to Oba family to appreciate Governor Soludo for fulfilling his promise. Soludo have done all that supposed to be done. One, you know, this place is a food basket. We move our goose, move our agricultural produce without any problem. And uh, encourage the farmers to work. Encourage the youth to work. We are one of the best um, farmers in, in rice cultivation. And our both family have what we call Obamas, the best in Arambra State, even in Africa. Because we have taken this rice to China, and China proved it to be the second to the best. Youths, men and women participate in the walk. The road being constructed by our governor has even injected life to so many people. Even those who are about to die that are very weak, they are saying for them experiencing this new road in this area, which they don't even think that they will see, that the life has come back again. As the excitement increases, the Transition Committee chairman who leads the walk says aside from the agricultural breakthrough in the area, for the first time, a health walk can take place because a road has been built. In the past, 
We used to see people do work in Federal Capital Territory. We used to see people doing work in Victoria Island in Lagos. Nobody envisaged that today in Okanot, in Obo family, in Ubene, in Ubwen, in Ebenebe, in Amansi, there can be a road walk where you walk on a third road, quality third road. Oh my God, we are very proud of Mr. Governor. The people of Obo family and other communities in Oka North say they are truly grateful to Governor Suludo for this great gift. As a way of instilling discipline, accountability and leadership skills in young people early in life, the University of Abuja Leadership Center, in conjunction with Tet Fund and Ugumba Leadership Center, has organized a one-day youth leadership clinic for senior prefects and best students in some select secondary schools in Imo State. Speaking during the flag off of the youth leadership clinic series in Norway, the state capital, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Administration of the University of Abuja, says the center underscores the importance of good leadership as a bedrock of a strong and productive society. Our correspondent, Eyutokwe Kutei, reports. It is a youth leadership clinic, an event organized for primary and secondary school students in Imo State by the University of Abuja Leadership Center in conjunction with the Tertiary Education Trust Fund and Ugumba Leadership Center. Senior prefects and overall best students from selected primary and secondary schools in Imo State already entrusted with soft leadership skills are being guided on ways to expand their thought processes to become future leaders. You are the games prefect of your school. You are the labor prefect of your school. You are the senior prefect of your school. You are the library captain of your school. The day other human beings God choose other human beings to point at you that you should play a leading role. That is where leadership is starting. The drive behind this clinic is to nurture and open up young minds to embrace future possibilities of creating better outcomes than the old generation. Speakers believe the key to this is identifying good role models across various sectors and emulating their qualities to lay a good foundation to address the crisis of public governance and leadership pervasive in Nigeria and across Africa. For you to be a leader, you must be able to cultivate, organize that quality that will make the people you are leading to believe in you so that you can lead them directly. Leaders are honest. Leaders don't lie. Leaders are not afraid. Leaders are like life. Leaders confront problems. The youths represented here speak on the lessons learned and the roles they need to play as future leaders. With what I've learned, I can go back to my school. I can practice it. I can show them that I've upgraded, especially with my certificate. <laughs> I'll show them that there has been a positive transformation in me since I entered here. And I'm feel, I feel happy, I feel blessed to be here. This is a very rare opportunity. We were invited to this beautiful program, to this program of leadership where the youth are amalgamated at this uh, beautiful venue to what enlighten them about the future of tomorrow, about what leadership, which is, tomorrow, which is today the key of success and betterment of our nations and Africa at large. Students are given awards and certificates of completion and participation as a reminder of the task ahead as they prepare to face the next levels of their education and expansion of their leadership roles. Channel Television News. When we return from this break, it will be time to check on the agriculture sector as the World Bank pledges to support livestock farmers in the Enugu state. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back. The National Coordinator of Livestock Productivity and Resilience Support Project, L Press, a World Bank assisted project, Mr. Sanusi Abubakar, has pledged to support livestock farmers in Enugu to boost livestock production in the state. Mr. Bubokar, during a courtesy visit at the government house in Enugu, explained that the project seeks to improve productivity and commercialization of livestock value chain, as well as address systemic weaknesses and challenges stifling the needed growth and full emancipation of the livestock sector in the state. 
based on performance as we move to implementation, the state that implement fast and properly, the activity can receive more funds. We don't have any, we think that any group can be part of the most performing, performing state by closure, thanks to what you did uh, for Appin at the beginning. And we are lucky that we are at the starting point, so we review all the aspects of the project, see where the bottlenecks are, and before uh, leaving the country, the state today, we'll find a way uh, uh, and uh, agree to the significant measure to help the team move forward. And for the state's deputy governor, Mr. Fang Yusai, Government will play its part in every partnership that will create trackable value for the state and the people. On our part as government, we are minded to do the needful. So we are minded to play our part in every enduring partnership that creates value for our state. But again, we want to work with you closely to ensure that whatever investment you make, which we support by the contribution we've made in counterpart for that we have trackable value to our people, that is measurable, that we can access, that everybody can say yes. Both El Press and the state government works together to leave a legacy for the people they accept. And on your part, we expect you to do much more for us. It's good to have beautiful sessions as we are having, but as you all know, we don't grow livestock in the conference room of the deputy governor. <laughs> we grow livestock in the farms. And as deputy governor, I'm happy to go with you to the farms to see the actual livestock production. Because at the end of the day, the sum total is that we should be able to increase the value and volume of livestock production in our state. On our part, we are minded to do that. The governor of Ebony State, Mr. Francis Mwifuru, has warned revenue officers against collecting taxes from poor rural market women in the state who sell their farm produce to eke out a living, describing the act as inhuman. The governor gave the warning in his office at the new government house in Abakaliki, the state capital, during the swearing-in of the chairman and members of the State Revenue Appeal Commission. According to the governor, the state has not recorded any progress in terms of revenue generation as residents are complaining about double taxation. Mr. Mwifuru advised the commission members not to go contrary to the constitutional provisions and other laws on taxation, charging them to hold to account the rich people in the society, including government officials who contravene the laws relating to payment of tenement and ground rates. He therefore warned against chasing the poor rural market women who sell vegetables and other farm produce in the market over taxation. I don't see the reason why we should be taxing people that ordinarily say what they gain from their farm. It's a challenging period, but I'm sure they are going to confront that and combat and do what is just, and everybody will be happy with their own. I don't want to shout them. I don't want, I don't like closing people shops because they didn't pay tax, even inside town, I don't like it. There's some of these people that don't have any alternative means of feeding their family and their extended family. There is a way you tax them, they will not make an after payment of rent. So you look at somebody's tax and you go shop and tax him based on that. There is nothing that is static, it's all about discussion and negotiation. And we'll return to uh, the tax concerns in Ebony State. But in the meantime, in the face of the current economic challenges facing the country, former INEC chairman Professor Morris Wu has urged the federal government to invest in technological innovation by funding research and development of universities, 
in order to encourage indigenous innovation, research and technology transfer central to economic and sustainable development. Professor Morris Iwu was speaking at the Federal University of Technology Owerifuto during the inauguration of the Technology and Innovation Support Center and workshop on intellectual property management and technology transfer. He says at this time in the country, there is the need to re rejig the entire university system in the country and give them room to participate in happenings around and enable them find solutions to some economic and health sector challenges. The whole idea of a university being clustered on their own, separate from the community, those days are gone. They should be able to participate in what is going on and find solutions to issues that are affecting the nation. Some of the products that we are, we are consuming, consuming, they are not necessary and they are not even useful to us. They may even be harmful. Some of the things, for example, simple zobo, for example, if you popularize the cultivation, the use of zobo for treatment of high blood pressure, you can see that it saves the country a lot of money directly on that. And you saw what I said about uh, palm fruit bioactive. This is the, the waste from the, from the oil palm production and oil producing uh, companies. In uh, Malaysia, they have, they have perfected it into products. Uh, but now in Nigeria, because of, the, of a lack of motivation, nobody is utilizing them. So those will impact directly on the economy almost, almost immediately. Then there's a long-term issue that we have to look at the funding of universities. It's not enough just to pay salaries and so on, but also equip them with things to work. Uh, we apologize. We must end the program now as we're totally out of time. Thank you for watching. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of the program. I am Bukola Kulka. Bye for now.